Hi everybody, BS Outdoors here. So on today's episode, um, we are going to do the tumbling phase of this. You saw us oil the hides. Now we are going to get them thrown in the tumbler. All right, so what we got here, we got, like he said, we got it oiled up the other day. And uh, you can see here, there's still a little bit damp underneath all there, even though uh, we let them do all that drip drying and stuff like that. And you can see here, the hides are drying out enough. They're starting to kind of break up a little bit. See that little bit of white starting there on there? So uh, here's a little better example. So anyway, so once they start to do that, it means they're ready for their first breakup. And, and a lot of times that means for people that are home tanning, is they just sit here and pull and pull and pull. But we got machines to do that kind of stuff, even though we do do a little bit, bit of that in, the, uh, in some of the areas of it. But I'm gonna show you real quick. Uh, first we're gonna dry this hair side. Then we're gonna flip them out, and then we're gonna do a little bit more tumbling, and and uh, they'll sit in there in the machine for about an hour. Some people do it two hours, some people do it four hours before this first initial breakup. We're only gonna run it for about an hour, and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll let them dry some more before we do our final breakup at the end. But uh, first step, we're gonna get this hair completely dry. It'll uh, minimize our, it'll uh, start to minimize our dry time instead of waiting days and days for all that water to actually evaporate on its own. So what we got here, we got sawdust and this is actually, you can order, you can order this. Uh, some people try to use it from home. Some of that stuff might work if you had some really good hardwoods, but if you don't have really good hardwood, what happens is if you get like some of the maples, things like that, you'll actually get a lot of browning uh, on your hides. Sometimes they'll have uh, like a, an ugly color to them. So this is actually taxidermy tumbling sawdust ordered from McKinsey. Oh, I'll give you a little look in there if you want to look in there, sorry. It's got uh, paddles in there. It's kind of like your dryer at home. And uh, what it's going to do is it's going to beat them hides around in there in this sawdust. And then uh, it helps not only just to break them up, like I mentioned, but it also helps to uh, dry the first side for our pre tumble. So we're just getting, we just want to get them dry after we get them dry. Then we'll work on getting them, uh, getting them broke up after that. So we'll get this for a minute. And there's a lot better way to close these things up than what I'm doing here. But uh, get this thing rolling here, and then we'll give it about 15 minutes to dry up and go from there. Yeah. So uh, all right, I'm gonna slow this machine here down. And uh, we're going to end up seeing what we got here. There we go. A few little turns here. Lined up. Pull these screws out. Should, should be, uh, first should be pretty dried up. And then uh, we're going to flip them all inside out. Flip the skin side out. <clears throat> and then... Uh, Throw them back in again, and the long, the longest period of time are actually going to be with that skin side or that leather side out. Uh, if you run it too long with the hair side out, it is going to possibly break some of the hairs. Uh, you probably, you, if you have uh, tips on your ears, uh, the nose pad, stuff like that, it's going to get all rubbed up and it's gonna cause you some issues later, but let me just uh, get this a little bit shook out. You can see how big of a difference that was, it's just 15 minutes made. You can see how fluffy, there's no more moisture in there uh, on in the hair side right now. So we're just gonna start flipping these flocks. And uh, 
get them all back uh, inside out here and then we're going to throw them back in we're going to let them roll for about an hour and like I mentioned before about a little bit thicker spots so these faces I am going to stretch them out a little bit by hand and just kind of work them up a little bit like that you know give them a few little stretches in these kind of uh, thicker areas get them broke up a little bit sometimes the machine you know no matter how long you leave it in there you still have to do a little bit of hand breaking but it's going to do most of the work for us. So we're just going to flip boxes. And uh, like I said, we're going to throw them back in. You see how nice and ready to go that looks. But they're not done yet because they, they, are, they still need to dry more. It doesn't look like it a lot right now, but they actually do. They, they still need more dry time. So. Sometimes they uh, are not very cooperative. All these hides flip back skin side out. So we're just going to throw them all back in here. And put the door back on. And we're going to give them about an hour in there, and that is going to break them down further, uh, get them softer, help, like I said, uh, maybe draw a little bit more moisture out. Uh, sometimes during this process, as they're moving around in there, it kind of creates a little heat. So... It'll also help remove extra some extra oils on the furs, things like that. If something hasn't soaked in by now after a day, uh, you know, it'll remove that oil. If there is a hard spot, we'll put more oil. Most of the time I find though, foxes basically need one coat of oil. Uh, coyote, except for up by their head, usually only needs one coat of oil. Bobcat, one coat of oil. You can definitely over oil a bobcat for some reason, and I don't know what. That bobcat, the hair on them, if you oil them twice, it, don't, it almost doesn't matter how many more times you run it through fresh sawdust, it will always look greasy. And I don't know why. It's just the way that hair is. It just soaks that oil in, and it just doesn't let it back out. Uh, but So some of these super thin skinned animals... It's one oil coat. Uh, the coyote, I will oil around the shoulders and the head twice. Otter, definitely two, twice, maybe even three times. Uh, they're just a really good thick leather. Beaver, the same way. They, they need a minimum of at least two oilings. A lot of times three oilings, depending on how thin it's been shaved. Uh, I mean, the bigger the animal, the thicker the hide, the more oil you want to put on there. And you don't want to wait till that oil's like completely just dried out and everything because then if you're putting it on a crispy hide, something that's already hard, it'll never, you're never hardly really ever going to get it that soft again. You need to keep up with it, keep up with it the whole time. Otherwise, it's just going to get hard and it's pretty much going to stay that way and it's just going to be very difficult to ever get it softened back up again. So... Here we go, let me show you real quick. I do have to help the motor a little bit. I'm giving it a little bit of extra spin here right off the get go, but we're gonna leave that in there for about an hour during the pre tumble. And uh, we'll pull those out and we'll see what they look like. Here we are back at it again on this uh, pre tumble episode. So I'm gonna slow her down. Eh, it didn't quite get as close as the last time, but. That's all right. Uh, we're going to take a look here. They've been in here about an hour, breaking up. Like I said, this is just the first tumble, first tumble of the process. We will have a final tumble later on, but that's another show. But for now, let's uh, see here what we got. Like I said, this uh, pre-tumble does two things. It helps to dry these hides up, and it helps to do a little bit of stretching on them. <clears throat> and then... Uh, and then later on, like I mentioned, during the final tumble, that'll be when we do, when we leave them in there for maybe two to three hours and let them really be, get super soft, that tannery soft, 
Uh, and then I'll show you on that episode too, the rest of the process. We're going to go back to hair side and there's a few other things involved. But like I said, that's another episode. We'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into that the next time. So, come in here. You can see these hides are still damp and everything. But you can kind of see see some of these lines here. I don't know how good you can see. And there's some of these lines here going on and everything. Where you can see where it's starting to actually kind of bust up them fibers in there. And uh, that's what we want. We want all these... We want all these fibers nice and broke up. I said there's still a few little areas like these, little legs, things like that, that don't have enough weight when they're in the machine to actually slap around and break up enough. So, like I had to break up the, head, the faces a little bit. You may have to pull on some of these little legs. There may even be like a little spot, like, like uh, say you got just a little area like this maybe even. And it's just not enough, so you got to pull on it a little bit. So I said the machine does the majority of the work. Some of the work you still have to do by hand. So it's just part of it. Like I mentioned uh, in the rehydrate video, you know, we're going to try and show you a little bit about why it does cost as much as it costs. So a little bit of uh, a little bit on the back end here. So we we had dry goods. We rehydrated them. We pickled them, we shaved them, we oiled them. Now we are pre-tumbling, and like I said, this it's it's a lot of time and uh, just being able to do this kind of thing. So uh, it's it, it's it just uh, that's that's why things you know when you send them in, you're thinking, wow, like fifty dollars, seventy dollars. $80 to tan something, you know, and you're just thinking, that that seems like a lot of money. It, it, it is a lot of money, but it's it's also a lot of work, and you got to have to pay somebody, you got to keep the lights on, you got insurance. I said there's just so many steps, the cost of the chemicals, uh, paperwork, things like that, so... It's, uh, I'm just, uh, we're just going through the steps here and trying to hopefully anyone who's watching, you know, do a little learning and be able to put up, put up and tan some of their own fur at home because of the market. So, I don't know, uh, I'm sure most of you have been following, but this is 2020 and... I don't know who else has maybe lived through a year as bad as 2020, it seems like, with everything that's going on this year. But, uh, you know, with the fur prices being down, why not try and do a little home tan and be able to put up your goods? Because we all know the fur market is in the hole and a lot of places aren't even going to want what you got. So make uh tan some things out of it you know put them in the cabin put them in the man cave uh whatever you do don't make fur hats out of them because that's my job so <laughs> if you want a fur hat come to prado's trade post he'll hook you up right we'll get we'll get you a hat and a liner and everything uh we'll get you all set up you know mount mount man Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, all those awesome guys. We'll get her. We'll get her fixed up. So, but anyway, that is the uh, pre-tumbling video. Uh, we're all cleared out, and the next time you see us, we're going to be throwing these back in for the uh, final tumble. And once we get done with the final tumbling process. Uh, we should have probably one more video about it after that and finishing up. And then, do you want to give them the good news what the next series is going to be after this? In the next series, uh, we're going to show you guys how to make a hat. Uh, there's been a lot of questions. Um, there are a lot of people that see them they're like, ooh, how do you do that? We're going to show you guys how to do that. So... 
But you can still leave it all to me, you know. It's just, uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're going to give you a quick demo of it. Uh, and I know I'm saying leave it all to me, but, you know, uh, if you want to try it, I encourage everyone to try something new and everything. So, but if you want something that's already done, you ain't got to worry about it. You then you can still stop by the shop here and I will definitely hook you up. Final step to tanning or taking dried goods, turning them in tan fur. Uh, we are on the final, final tumble step. We've went through rehydrate, went through flip to acid, shave, go back into acid, neutralize, let them drip. First oil, first tumble, now we're on final tumble here, so. Alright, yep, so now what we got going on here is they dried out enough, and you can watch this, that's what you want. You start breaking them up like that, instead of going over each one of these all by hand, doing all that work, we're going to throw them in the machine here. But I am going to hold one off to the side, and I will show you, like I mentioned in an earlier video, uh, about how to uh, how to run those on a cable. So for those of you at home don't got something like this, you'll be able to go ahead and you'll still have you'll still be able to come up with a good product. So throw them in there. There's already sawdust. Do like the same as we did in uh, pre-tumble. Latch your door down. And with the sawdust, how often should you change that? Yeah, so when your sawdust starts to look, uh, you, I'll be able to show you a little bit here. Let me show you actually right quick now. So you'll be able to start noticing some color variations. You can see this is some used stuff, and this is some new stuff. I don't know how good you guys can see it there in the video, but but yeah. Uh, this stuff right here, when, once it gets to this stage here, it's, it's kind of fine for pre-tumble. But you want good, good sawdust in there when you go to do your final tumble, because that's going to pull all the excess oil off of the uh, off of those hairs. So it's going to make sure that the, it doesn't look like you have greasy hides when it could, when it comes out. All right, they're in there. We're going to let them run for about two hours. Then we're going to pull them out, we're going to flip them hair side, and then I will show you how we do those steps, and we'll move on from there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you how to do that cabling like I was mentioned. So I got here, got some 330 seconds cable, we got about 5 foot from the bottom to the top here, and uh... What I do is I'm going to run this hide on here for those of you at home, like I said, that don't have a tumbling machine, stuff like that. I want to show you kind of a little bit here on the head, see how you can kind of pull by hand. Well, you come over here, kind of get that in there, run it around a little bit. You can see it's really starting to lighten up, whiten up. You can run a little bit more on here. You'll be able to really start seeing some transformation now. You can really see, start seeing the difference in colors. And uh, yeah, this is how I always did all mine starting out before I even ever had a uh, machine. I'll give it a little turn, kind of hit it like four sides here, you know, just kind of going around, breaking. Some hides take longer, some hides take a shorter amount of time. Uh, a lot of times, tune, tie up, stuff like that, they're going to take a little bit longer, a little thicker. Otter takes quite a while. If you ever try to do beaver this way, you're going to have some arms on you when you are done. So. Now, are you putting a bunch of pressure or just keeping it taut? Or Yeah, so on stuff like raccoons, you can basically grab a hold of the face. Grab all the tail. You can just you pretty much lean back pretty good with them. Uh, but oh, there I pulled too hard. Got in there. See, there was a little hole like this up on this side. Pull a little too hard. Snagged on that cable. Popped it right open. That's how easy it is on cable. But yeah, uh, raccoons. 
you'd be able to pull on a lot harder. It's Fox, I say I'm trying to be gentle with it, but I found that little hole there under the arm. I wasn't expecting. Uh, you know, that's just something that's gonna happen. We can't cut around it later. We'll sew it up and we'll go ahead and we'll still be able to use it. So, which will be in some future videos. Stop hat making. So stay tuned for that. And these right here, you know, they're gonna, they're not perfectly tan. You know, they're not perfectly all cleaned up and stuff, I should say. But they are gonna be your wall hanger variety. So, um, some people would, are gonna say, well, you know, maybe that doesn't look as nice as what I got before from another place. Well, that's fine. This is pretty much, it's kind of your run of the mill uh, home tanning video here. So, uh, and then big tanneries, they got a lot more things than I even have. So, you just kind of go with what you got and make the most of it. We're just kind of giving this series as a little bit of a, uh, run down here on like we mentioned before what you can do with your goods at home uh, maybe or you not. can send them off here to Prado's trading post yeah and I will try my best not to uh, mess anything up for you uh, I said we got in that little hole there I normally don't run the cable stuff like this but yep kind of give a little tug here and there it's all hand breaking like that so another thing is kind of running it on rope and kind of running it uh, this kind of way here does is it'll pull up a lot of, I don't know what you want to call them, little tags. It'll pull up a lot of these little tags on these on these hides and it may or may not be something that you care about a whole lot. So if it is, uh, definitely tumbling it or maybe using a... A surface such as maybe a table edge or something like that may be the way you want to go. Um, these are all going to be made into hats, so you will not, you, no one will ever see the insides of these. They'll have a liner in there, it'll be great. I said they're still tan, still good to go, a little ugly, but anyway, that's about what we got there, so see, see what we had. There you go. Here we are. They've uh, been running here a couple hours. We got the door off, save Tom. There's what they're starting to look like in here. See, you can really see that uh, all the lines, they're breaking up really well, doing good. So, now what we're going to do is it's time to put them uh, hair side out. And we are going to run the fur in there to get the excess oil off, get them cleaned up, do all that. I'll see if I can show a little example here of maybe a little bit of the excess oil, like what I'm talking about. You can see how the hair's kind of a little bit laid down. It's not super fluffy. Kind of see a little bit how kind of that oil there. So we're going we're gonna to pull that all out of there in this next step. What we got around here. So here's what we're going to do. There's a lot of different versions of this. So this is actually from Van Dyke's Cedar Guard Cedar Wood Oil Solution. So this right here is kind of like the uh, kind of like the closet deal, you know, the cedar closets. So it's super super uh, potent. Got a physician consultant uh, warning labels on the side. So, yep, this stuff right here, when it's in its uh, concentrated form, is not going to be good. So, we're going to do, and throw a couple capfuls in there, right into our sawdust solution. And that is actually going to help uh, make our hides smell really nice at the end of this process. So, we're going to throw them back in. We're going to let them run for about another half hour. Get that, get the oil out of them hide, get it cleaned up real nice. And we'll show you uh, after that. So stay tuned. Alright, these hides have been rolling in here about a half hour now. So we're going to 
slow this ride down. And we are going to give them a little checking out. Sometimes they'll be really good to go. Other times you may need a few more minutes. Depends on how they look. Once we get them out, we don't know till they are. See how much cleaner that is and fluffed up. It's not all oily. The hair is all standing up. So now I'm going to show you this quick next process real quick. This is how we're going to get the sawdust off. So I could take them all out, shake them up and everything. Uh, but this right here, this last step, actually really kind of helps knock that dust out of them. And kind of even fluffs them even just a little bit further, I think. So, put this screen door on here. And we're going to flip her back on. We're going to let all that dust come up out of there. Put this once we're out of sawdust. Once we're out of sawdust, if you leave them in there, there just be straight friction between them and the inside of this machine. Uh, so it'll actually start to do the opposite effect. It'll start rubbing all the hair right back off, especially on the ear tips. Or it might even rub the color off the nose, uh, things like that. So we're going to give this about 10, 15 minutes like this. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll check it again. All right, you can see they've been in there a little while. We're not really spitting any more dust out of here. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out, see what kind of results we got. Almost. Almost that time. One little, uh, one little good shaking off here. There is just a little bit of dust left on it. Doesn't get it all. There you go. Poke them. Uh, run, run that fur up and everything. Nice and clean. Oils all off. All fluffed up. Just as flimsy as you want it, you know. So, like I said, that's kind of some at-home stuff. Uh, I realized some of this was machine, but I did show you a little bit on the cable. Kind of, we showed you the uh, hand scrapers, things like that. So, just throw a few of these out for you. Get a good look at everything. So that way you'll know what to expect later on. We do some videos, show you how to make, make these into a hat. That's a kind of that's kind of a big fox. A good size one. Gray. The grays are so pretty. cable so cut them out real nice cleaned up more left. Little one. Little. there you go finished product all right guys well there you have it I really hope you guys enjoyed this video series um, like I said there will be more like it 
our hat making series will be the next one we get into. Um, if you guys have any recommendations for anything you like to see, any requests, uh, anything at all, please guys let us know. Alright, tight chains.